Today we are going to be talking about Anne Hathaway and Nicholas Galantine's new movie, The Idea of You. Now what is The Idea of You and why do we care? Like why do we care about this seemingly normal romantic movie that came out on Amazon Prime? They come out with a new romantic movie every single week. Why do I care about this one? This movie is yet another rendition of movie characters based off of Harry Styles. <laughs> Now, if I had a nickel for every single time I've sat down and made a video about a movie based off of Harry Styles, I would only have two nickels, but that's really weird. I believe that Harry Styles needs to be studied and not only just studied, but compensated for the amount of authors that felt like it was necessary to base lead roles of romantic movies off of him. Not just a tattoo, not just an act that he did, not just a pop star. Him specifically, the tattooed pop star from a boy band. They needed him bad. Why? Now, this comes from me, someone who did not listen to One Direction. I actually thought I was a lesbian the entire time One Direction was in its height of popularity. So admitting that a man was attractive was really difficult to me. And I didn't actually admit men were attractive until I was about 14 or 15. Yeah. Yeah. Today we're not going to be talking about Harry Styles, we're going to be talking about the movie, but this is a very crucial part of the movie because not only is this movie based on Harry Styles, it actually has a darker history to it uh, that is very disturbing in my opinion. First of all, writing a book based off of a real life pop culture person weird. I believe the book was written in 2017 and the only public known relationship that Harry Styles had had was with a 34 year old woman when he was 17 years old. And if the book character is based off of him being with an older woman, that's like not okay because in a sense, essentially you're basing this relationship off of someone being groomed. Now I had a lot of issues with After and I thought After was really odd. I thought it was a very odd concept to write something and not only write something based off of a real person, but writing them in this sexualized way. I don't know. If someone started writing fan fiction that was based off of me and it was about a girl with bangs that made movie commentaries and they were talking about wanting to literally pound me all the time, I would find that extremely disturbing and extremely creepy. And I believe the same rules apply to this movie as well. I watched the movie and spoiler alert, it wasn't bad. Like the movie was fine. But in terms of the source material for the movie, it's very odd and it's very disturbing. The idea of you, more like the idea of the movie, is a very weird concept to push forward to begin with. The marketing of this movie has taken a very big left turn and they have tried their damn hardest to tell us that it is not about Harry Styles. That this movie, this character is not based off of Harry Styles. Nicholas Galantine says that he was basing it off of BTS and, 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 uh, uh, uh. There was like another one that I don't remember. I don't think you were trying to replicate Jimin. Were you trying to replicate Jungkook? I don't think so. If I know anything about any of the pieces within this story, if I know any of the history based on any of the pieces within the story, I know BTS. That man is not trying to replicate Jungkook. That man is not trying to replicate Jungkook. That man is trying to replicate a white man. With my personal opinion aside, there have been comments from the author herself talking about the book and the controversy surrounding the book. Uh, she wrote an article for Time Magazine talking about uh, her opinion on it. And in my opinion, I think it was a lot of bullshit. That's very brutal uh, to say, but I just felt like it was 
her really escaping the questions. In it, she talks about the comparison and criticism she has received for her novel. Uh, I find this article to be really defensive and it avoids a lot of accountability that she admitted a lot of things in the past surrounding this book and then kind of backtracks later. In interviews, she had said that she was watching like One Direction music videos and got inspired by Harry Styles. And then in this one, she's kind of like, I don't know why anyone would say that this movie is fan fiction. Fan fiction is great but I don't do that I'm a real author and it's kind of just like really avoidant of the main issues of it which is not that it's based off of Harry Styles we just saw a major franchise do that and be fine it's about the like the relationships that you're basing it off of that you're obviously basing it off of there's like no avoiding what it's based off of the time the, the the receipts are there the time receipts are there the author escapes a lot of the backlash she faces by claiming that these comments and the criticism that she receives are rooted in sexism and that the audience is missing the point of the novel that it's not a romance but more of a coming of age of this older woman i think she thinks that she's giving like francis ha by greta gerwig i think she thinks that she's giving this like really uh deep insight to an older woman's coming of age and I have to be the one to tell her that she's not <laughs> um I have to be the one to break the news that this movie is a pure romance about an older woman and a younger man. She also says that fan fictions are just not what she does and that the characters in this novel are inspired by people that she knows in real life and has encountered in real life. She states in another article that she regrets ever saying that Harry Styles was an inspiration for the main character. I think that that's a load of bullshit. I think that she loves that it's based off of Harry Styles. I think that she leans into it. Like, in my opinion, as not someone who writes fiction I dabble in a little bit of creative writing but I don't write I'm not a professional author but I would assume that a professional author it is so easy to um change enough characteristics of a character to make it so it's not based off of a real person and then you take that inspiration where you're like hey I was watching a Harry Styles video and I was like that's kind of like serving I want to base this character off it I think I would take that to my grave I would never say that on record people take inspiration from real life celebrities like that is totally a part of all writing all creative processes I like totally understand that bitch take it to the grave shut the hell up how about you take it to the grave and shut the hell up because nobody wants to watch a movie and think this was about harry styles and that relationship he had when he was a minor that's weird that's disturbing to the author of this movie you're super weird let's get into talking about the movie itself because i do have a lot of issues with the movie as well and I watched this movie so you don't have to. I didn't want everyone to have to go watch this movie that has a bunch of controversy surrounding it. So I just watched it for you. And here are my thoughts around all the, the entire movie. Today's video is sponsored by Rocket Money. This year, I really wanted to start saving more money so I could travel more. And Rocket Money has been just the tool to do that. Rocket Money is a personal financial app that helps you cancel unwanted subscriptions, lower your bills, and manage your overall money usage better. I love using Rocket Money to cancel my unwanted subscriptions with Rocket Money, they can safely and securely identify your reoccurring charges and subscriptions. With this, it can help you see what you're being charged more of or double of. Sometimes we're paying for more than one subscription. As someone that has loads and loads of streaming services, this has happened to me before, and I'm glad I have Rocket Money to help me identify that I am paying double the amount for one usage of a subscription. And if you want to, you can cancel your subscriptions straight through the Rocket Money app. No need to deal with any customer service lines or calls. Rocket Money has helped save its customers up to $740 a year with $500 million worth of canceled subscriptions. My favorite tool on Rocket Money is its budgeting tool. I was budgeting like a caveman before Rocket Money. I was using a pen and paper every single month, writing down every single expense. And once I got rocket money I realized I was wasting a ton of ink and paper. The budgeting tool helps you analyze your spending habits and create a custom budget that fits your lifestyle. Automatically monitoring your spending habits by category and notifying you when you have exceeded your limit. And if it doesn't get any better than that rocket money has a set up smart savings where it basically transfers it automatically transfers money into your savings account every single month so you don't even have to worry about how much of your check you're putting into your savings every single month and you can 
can just see that savings account grow and grow every single month. As someone who is taking over her personal finances with a pen and paper, I truly recommend Rocket Money to anyone trying to set out financial goals this year. I think it is an amazing app and it has helped me tons in the year of trying not to spend as much. I just don't want to spend as much. I just moved. I, I want to make better choices in the year 2024. So get the tools you need to take over your financial freedom by going to rocketmoney.com slash trend level or clicking the link at the top of my description to get started for free today. Thank you Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. So the movie follows a 40 year old woman played by Anne Hathaway by the name of Celine and her journey in uh, being recently divorced. It follows her and her family she has a daughter by the name of Izzy who is a teenage girl I think she's about 16 years old and we go through the beginning of the movie where Celine is actually supposed to go on a camping trip by herself and her daughter and her friends are supposed to go to Coachella with her dad that doesn't end up happening the daughter and friends actually have to go to Celine and say please take us to Coachella because the dad can't take her anymore because he's going on a work trip so Celine takes them to Coachella where a famous boy band is playing and they had gotten VIP meet and greet tickets for the famous boy band August Moon. And Celine is at Coachella. She's like distressed. She didn't have time to get ready. Then she's like, I have to go potty. So she goes to the bathroom and this lady gives her directions. She's like, they're on the right. It's like all these like separate trailers. I don't know why she thought this was the public restroom. So she goes in and there's someone in the bathroom. So she's like, I'm gonna wait. So this fine attractive man comes out of the stall and he's like what are you doing and she's like i'm going to the bathroom and he's like okay and then he like sits down in his trailer and then Anne hathaway uses the bathroom and then Anne hathaway comes out and she's like why are you like still here and he's like this is my trailer i'm actually the owner of this house and she's like oh and he's like i'm hayes campbell and she's like oh my god and the way he like says it is so funny he's like i'm in the band I'm Hayes Campbell, like I'm performing on the main stage in an hour. I'm Hayes Campbell. I would eat somebody in front of you to completely change the structure of your life. What are you talking about? This scene pissed me off. The entire first act of this movie actually pissed me off. I don't know why, but it just like, it felt like they were trying to like be smug with me. It's like I was watching this movie and I felt like the characters were trying to be like, pull something on me and be smug. I was like, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Don't play me like that. Don't look at me like that. Don't say lines like that. You're pissing me off and I don't want to hear it. And he says like really weird things. He's like, do you want to hang out after this? And she's like, why would I want to hang out with you? Like, it is just so weird that he would like see this random middle-aged lady in his trailer and be like, do you want to hang out? I say that, but if it was like Anne Hathaway, I probably would be like, do you want to hang out? Right? Right. And then Celine and her kid and her kid's friends go to the meet and greet to take pictures, you know, so they can show the dad that they actually went. Hayes and Celine are like completely flirting right in front of- Right in front of my salad? Right in front of her child. Still don't know your name. I'm Celine. Oh, is that, uh, is that French? Uh, You're flirting right in front of your daughter. Stop. And then like her daughter's friend obviously notices because he's like smart and he's like, oh my God, that's Celine. She's actually an art collector. She has an art gallery in S Silver Lake. You should totally come by because like he catches the vibe. Unlike everybody else in the room, he catches the vibe. And then finally we see August Moon performing at the main stage at Coachella. And then he does this like thing where he's like, oh, we're going to play the next song for you guys. Wait a second, we're not. We're gonna change it up last minute. And he's like looking at Celine in the crowd and he changed the song and he's singing about an older woman. And like, she is cracking me up cause she is kicking her feet at this. She's like, ah! She is literally smitten for this boy. For this boy, she's like, that's my man's, my man's, my man's up on the main stage. Like, that's literally everything. She's like, he's changed the song on the set for me. Like, I'm just that, I'm that hot and milfy that he like had to change the set song for me. And I'm like crying because she's literally like, 
like Anne Hathaway was so funny in this movie. Like the the like amount of facial expressions that she made, where she's just like, like she was so YN in this movie. Like it literally like. I feel like she did her, like, studying. She read her fan fiction. Like, she bodied YN. Like, she bodied that shit. Like, she was like, I'm going to be the gaze that you have always dreamed of in fan fiction. I'm going to have a, a messy fringe and, 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 a, and, a, and a loose wave in my hair. And I'm going to smile and dance like nobody's watching. And I will be sold to One Direction tomorrow morning. So Coachella happens, and so Lena's at her art gallery, and she's like, you know, doing art gallery things. Like, she kind of serves. Like, I don't know. She was kind of serving throughout this movie. And then all of a sudden, of course, of course, of course, Hayes Campbell walks into her art gallery and is like, hey, like, hey again. Hey, you. I'm here to buy new art for my flat in London. Sure you are. Sure you are. Okay, then he goes to buy every single piece of art within her art gallery. Buys out the whole thing. You know what, I'll just take it all. And of course there's sexual tension while they're buying art because why wouldn't there be sexual tension while you're buying wall art? So while they're talking in the car, they're like driving back and they're like, let's go get to like a bite to eat because like, of course it's a date and like he doesn't want to go to a public restaurant because he doesn't want to be seen. And she's like, I'll make you a sandwich which is so mother coded and not in a good way like not mothering like mother like mothering a little too close to like how actually mother like a mother would make you a sandwich like that's weird should have just said like let's order something would have been a lot chiller they like have a heart to heart over the sandwich and she opens up about how her ex-husband cheated on her and the way she found out was at a dinner party at like a work dinner party and how like everyone knew that she was being cheated on except for her because she started talking about a story about someone was being cheated on and like everybody got quiet because they knew that she was being cheated on and she talks about how she was like so betrayed and so she lost all of her trust and then she got a divorce and she was not only cheated on but then like everybody around her in her life knew to me this first impression of her character was really flat i think that anne hathaway has a lot of talent and i think that she she's can be like a really powerful actress and I think they kind of wasted a lot of her potential to give this character a lot of dimension and a lot of depth and when reading about it and reading about how the author was like this movie is about you know women and how like older women are treated and like a lot to do with misogyny and sexism and and ageism and then you hear it and it's kind of like oh I kind of figured that the like husband was a dick like I thought there was going to be more to her character and I felt like this was pretty flat and she steps out for like a phone call and then he she like comes back and he's like playing the piano of course they like have a moment by the piano and they like hands like touching hands and then they start like kind of going into a kiss and it's like kind of a sexy kiss and like i get it i get the vibes like i'm not like as much as i have criticism for this like i get the vibes that they're trying to put out could we have done it in a better way of course could have the source material been something better of course but like i get the vibes of what they're trying to like portray in the movie she like turns around and she's like no i'm too old for you and he's like I don't give a fuck and it was honestly like they have chemistry as much as I like hate to say it like these two characters these two actors have like major chemistry like they go back and forth in their kiss and then Soline eventually cuts it off and is like you have to leave like you can't be here like um like literally too old for you he's 24 and I think she's 40 which is like fairly it's a fairly big age gap, might I say. And he's like, literally doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, when can I see you again? She's like, I'm me and you're you. And like, we don't fit. And like, first of all, not only is this cliche, it just doesn't make any sense because he's a boy band star, right? In a more higher luxury class of the world. She's an art collector. Like she's a MILF art collector. I don't know about you, a MILF art collector and a boy band celebrity makes complete sense to me. I've never seen anything that makes more sense. What do you mean we don't fit? They act like she acts like she's so fucking ugly in this movie. <laughs> like, I cannot stand it. Don't cast Anne Hathaway and be like, I'm old and ugly. Like, no, you're not. 
And that's why I know she's so YN because it's like, you're not old and ugly. You're literally Anne Hathaway. And if the movie doesn't move its obstacles out of the way faster, they send Celine's daughter Izzy to summer camp to be a camp counselor. So now we don't have to worry about Izzy being there at all. The, ma the one major obstacle within this movie is removed just like that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Sure. The next parts of this movie are like basically Hay starts texting Celine and he's like, I can't get our kiss out of my mind. Like he's texting like a boy, which I like appreciate that he like still texts like a 24 year old boy because that's how they text. And she's like, stop. Why don't you come to New York with me? I'm going there for a show. Come. She's like, no, I can't. Then she watches like music videos of him and then she's like, I'm coming to New York. She's like that video of Paul Wesley where he was like, sorry guys, I gotta go. All right guys, I gotta run. And he comes back right around and he goes, I gotta stay. All right, I gotta stay. I'm right here. That was her. She was like, I can't go to New York. Watch his music videos. I gotta go to New York. I got, actually, I gotta go to New York. Give me a chopped sandwich up in here. And Celine shows up to this boy's hotel room like ready to bone. Like she shows up to this man's hotel room ready to like, ready to go. Like she's in a sex, she's in a trench coat and a sexy ass dress underneath. And he's like, oh my God, drooling, MILF in front of me, MILF in front of me, drooling at the side of MILF, which is like fair. Like his perspective of the movie, I totally get but hers, I don't know. And this is like their first sex scene of the movie. And in terms of sex scene, in terms of how I write sex scenes, it was fine. It was good. I think they have good chemistry. I think it was like, you know, pretty tasteful. I think they like have a sex scene. I don't know. Like I thought it was well done. I think they have really good chemistry. And he orders chicken fingers afterwards, which if that doesn't tell you the age difference dynamic going on, then I don't know what else will. Even though I criticize, I think Celine is kind of like eating. Like I feel like she's kind of eating because she's like 40, recently divorced, and she's getting serviced. She's having sex with the like hottest boy band member ever and she looks good while she's doing it. Like not only is she receiving satisfaction, she's also looks super good in this movie. Like she looks super good and and get paid like seven million for this movie. So like she's queening out. Like it's like mother of the century. It's like you get to be hot and kiss another hot person for seven million dollars. That's really good. That looks really good. I I should have gotten that. Dylan, that looks really good. I should have got that. And then, of course, of course, he invites her on the Europe leg of his worldwide tour. He invites her on the Euro European part of his worldwide tour. And she's like, no, I, possi I can't possibly do that. I can't. I can't do it. It's awful. I can't do that. And then she's like, I gotta go. All right, I gotta stay. I'm gonna I gotta go. And he brings her on tour as his art consultant. Next is a compilation of them on the European tour. Um, it's everything. It's it's kind of a serve. I don't know. She's kind of queening out right here. Like she's living the life. She gets to like be with her mans, her mans, her mans at night and then like go to a show every single night. Like she's actually queening out. She's on like, she's in backstage. Like, and he, she's like standing on the side of the stage and every single night he sings one of the lines, which is you are a masterpiece to her. He sings it to her every night. And I'm like, kind of like, okay, I get it. Like I get the vibes. Like a lot of the times through this movie, I was like, I don't understand how one could be with one like that. And then he's like singing to her and he's like, you're a masterpiece, you're a masterpiece. And I get it, I get it. It was kind of like, okay, like I, yeah, you wish that was you, huh? Yeah, I wish it was me. Like, I get it. And I like, we, you know, I was, I was, uh, I was getting the vibes a lot. And it's just like a very happy compilation. Like, it's just very happy-go-lucky. Everything is great. Everything is fine. And he's like, hey, Celine, like, we're gonna go to, like, Oli's Beach House. We're gonna go to Oli's Beach House or something with all the girlfriends and the boys. And so, like, the boy band and their girlfriends go to this beach house. And they do a very lackluster scene trying to show 
uh, this older woman's character and her body insecurity, I feel like it was very lazy. Boring, yawning, sloppy, lazy. I feel like the author talks about sexism, misogyny, and ageism and like the 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 taboo nature around it all and uh how she tries to combat that and then in this scene it was like her like looking at the younger girls in bikinis and looking at their bodies and then she just kind of like looks at herself she like doesn't want to put on a bikini she puts on a one piece and then like puts on this like denim like muumu she like puts on her muumu and like goes out and it's like okay like and then like nothing is really addressed afterwards and we don't really see her opening up to anyone about these insecurities that she faces after being a recently divorced like 40 year old woman and kind of the pressures that come along with it the pressures of being a woman not only to be a woman but to be a woman and never age it was kind of just like oh yeah she has insecurities too and that's it she's not like other girls She's Anne Hathaway. Cast someone that's not in perfect bikini body like shape if you want me to believe that they're gonna be upset about like wearing a bikini in front of people. Jesus Christ. It's like, does Anne Hathaway really wear moo's at the beach? Does she? Cause if so, then like queen, like queen. But like, does Anne Hathaway actually wear moo's? Let me know. And here's a pivotal part of the movie. So Lian gets 10 things I hate about you. She gets, uh, he's all vatted. She gets, she gets, uh, uh, she gets played. She gets punked. She gets, she gets tricked. After she's already been tricked by everyone around her with her ex-husband. Oh, everyone knew that he was cheating, but only she didn't know. She gets punked again. This is when secrets are revealed. Uh, you know, they're all hanging outside on the side of the pool. Like, you know, Celine is like in Hay's arms, they're like cuddling. It's like, you know, whatever. And secrets are revealed over these popsicles. And still in her moo moo, the young ones laugh at Celine and Hay's meet cute. They're like, oh, like you were a fan of August Moon, like you were a moon head, like you, you, you were obsessed. And she was like, no, like we actually met in the bathroom. And then like at the show, at the main stage, like Hayes dedicated a song to me. And they literally like, I can't, um, I can't express how bur they burst out laughing at her. They're giggling, they're kikiing, they're like, literally like, kiki kiki. <laughs> we do that when one of us finds a girl, or in Hayes' case, a woman. Cute. <laughs> we pretend to change the set list at the last minute. It's a bit. It's a bit. That was a bit, that was all a bit. And she's like, oh my God, like, yeah. And like, they're like, Hayes didn't tell you that was a bit. And she was like, no, that like would be pretty fucked up if you didn't tell me. That girl did not know. And they tell her and they reminisce about a story about Hayes doing it to another lady, uh, a Swedish actress uh, that was also an older woman. And she's like, oh my God, like, that's so funny, guys. That's actually so hilarious. She exits in a very classy way. She's like, I just, oh, oh, I forgot that thing. Let me just go grab that. Um, like, cause she's classy. She's like a 40 year old woman. She has to be classy and she exits very peacefully and she starts packing up her stuff. And this is where we finally get the iconic name drop of the movie. She goes, I guess I just got swept up in the idea of you. Mic drop. I got swept up in the idea of you. Mic drop. I guess I just got swept up in the idea of you. I love that. I honestly love that. Out of all the things to have named the movie, I guess I just got swept up in the idea of you. I, I get it. I get the vibes. I get it. I like it. And then she's like talking to him about how like she's already been played once, how she's, you know, I just got, I fell for your fuckboy moves and that's on me. Like I'm a 40 year old woman. Like I should have known better. I don't know how I got played as well. Like, and she's talking to him and then all of a sudden he's like, I'm sorry. Like da 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 da. He turns it on her and he's like, you're ashamed of me. Who knows about me? Does your daughter? Does your friends? Does anybody know about me? So what? You're um, you're ashamed of me. Is that it? Ooh, like he kind of ate. He kind of ate because he turns it on her so quickly, which is like not good for argument's sake. He's like, "Are you ashamed of me?" And she says, "I'm ashamed." Eh, hey, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yep. And this is like kind of like the climax of the movie. It's like one of the climaxes. It's like the climax for the major climax of the movie. Hayes is like, I'll book you a flight back to LA and arrange your things. And then she goes back to LA 
and she's sad she's really sad and she's alone and she's like I miss my freaking Bafey. Like, I actually miss my freaking Bafey so bad. And as Celine is doing her morning routine, she's getting her tea, she's, you know, opening up the blinds, she's, you know, doing her little thing, putting on a robe. Like, she's doing the whole morning shebang. She opens up her laptop, boom, first thing in front of her is her naked body. Just kidding, she's not naked. She's actually in a bikini, a two piece bikini, underneath. The most famous boy band member in the world, Hayes Campbell. <laughs> and like, this is the whole reveal scene. Everybody knows that Hayes Campbell is with an older woman, an older woman who is an art collector. Well, yes. And? Exactly. Exactly! Like, and what about it? And what about it is like kind of like the like idea that I got swept up in. The idea, I got swept up in the idea of that. Um, they have a very big scene with the daughter and Celine and the, I'm like crying at how the daughter is like crying. And like, I get it that she's crying about not the fact that like she's with a boy band member, but that the fact that like she lied to her. But like, the context like, like which I was watching it was like I can't believe you're with Hayes Campbell like what the fuck like what the fuck and then after finally having a heart to heart with her daughter she then finally goes back and tries to uh rekindle things with Hayes she goes to his studio and he's like you know he's making a self-titled album of course like he's having his like Hayes Campbell self-titled album coming out to you coming to you soon coming to you soon and she sees him and she basically says like you know I'm fine like you know everything with the press and the media like I'm fine what I'm really like you know the most sorry about is how I treated you and she goes to say that like I felt the same things that you felt but I was ashamed to admit it like I shouldn't have said those things to you it was really hurtful and he's talking to her and he's like I just like I need a moment and then it's like two seconds and he's like okay I've had my moment and they like kiss and it was like kind of cute like I'll be honest like it was like kind of cute like I don't know he has really good like one-liners when they're like about to kiss or something like he just like is so down bad for her like it's really nice to see there's nothing more than I like to see in media and in within romantic movies than the man that really is just so utterly obsessed with the woman it makes everything 10 times 10 million times better it makes it so scrumptious so delicious to see a man just fall head over heels for a woman yeah and they're back to like queening out again but this time they're like queening out in public like they don't care about the pops they're like you know they're running together they're going out in public like she's going to public events with him and he's going to hang out with her old people friends and and they're like kind of queening they're kind of serving out together like onika burger like they are serving together they're like kind of just having like living their lives living their fantastical lives together and it's kind of everything it is kind of everything in my opinion but like a serve can't last forever and like you know queening out can only last so long and their serve comes to an end when they realize that izzy is being bullied at school and that Celine is getting like the most amount of backlash online i've ever seen in my entire life they are saying that she should die that like she's you know, she needs to go back and like grow up. She needs to start acting like a 40 year old woman. And like, Hayes is kind of like head in the clouds. When Hayes leaves town, he goes to help Ollie with something, his boy band member. He goes to do that. And this is kind of where all of her realization of how dramatic the situation is because he's not there. Like she can understand the severity of it when she doesn't have the benefit of it, which is Hayes. And she's like realizing how like distraught everything is going on in her house when her daughter like doesn't want to stay at the house anymore. Which honestly, in my opinion, because their house is like, Celine's house is like literally like covered with paparazzis. I don't know why, like as soon as the first paparazzi showed up, I would have been like, okay, my daughter, like you're going to stay with your dad. Like I know like this will die down eventually, but until then, like you need to stay with your dad at this point because it's not safe for you here. I don't know why that wasn't a decision made earlier. And then when Hayes comes back from helping Ollie, Celine decides to break up with him again. Two times, one film. Bitch. 
don't piss me off. Don't make me mad. Don't make me mad because that's like actually like pissing me off. She decides to break up with him. And this man is so down bad. He was like, I'll quit. You don't like the fame and the fortune? You don't You don't like the public figureness? I'll quit. That man is down bad. I like he was ready to give it all up for this woman. He loves her so much. He loves her so much that he was willing to quit his entire career that he's been building since he was 14 for her. That's a man. That's a motherfucking man right there. What are you talking about? That's a motherfucking man. Okay. And he comes to her house a little bit later and he's like, he says the line that I love. Uh, I auditioned for the band when I was 14. It shouldn't ruin a life. And Celine says, it's not going to. And I really like that line. I think it's like, I don't know. It kind of like shows you where his character is. Like he really did make the decision. And like, that's why he's so willing to give it up because he doesn't want his decisions from when he was a kid to ruin his life now. And I thought it was, I thought it was a very good line choice for that moment. I think it worked really well. And they say like, I love you to each other. It's a really sad scene. They're like basically having this like goodbye breakup kisses and they're having their like goodbye kiss and like the bisexual lighting and it's really sad. It's like sexy, but it's sad. Hayes asked Celine if she will revisit this relationship in five years once everything died down, when he's not as popular, when he's not at the height of his career, and when her daughter is, you know, in college, out of high school. And she's like, okay, but like, if you find happiness, if you have a chance at happiness, take it, and I will too. If you get a shot at happiness, you take it. Cut to five years later, Anne Hathaway is in her The Intern haircut, and Izzy is in college, and Hayes is performing on the Graham Norton show, uh, with a weird and odd beard, which like looks okay from like far away, but like up close, it's like a little bit patchy. It's not the best, it's not my favorite. And like Celine is watching the Graham Norton show. She like flips it on the TV and she's like literally like crying. Five years gone by and she's crying at this man on, he's 30 years old at this point and she's 45 and she's crying at this man on the television and he's singing a song Oppie about her and it's really sad and he's on his like solo career. He's like, you know, self-titled album number three at this point, like he's living his life. He's getting interviewed on the Graham Norton show and Graham Norton is like, so what are you gonna do? Like what's after this? Are you having a break? Are you having a holiday after this? Like you've been going on tour for so long. What are you gonna do now that it's over? And he talks about how he thinks that he's going to take a little break in LA for a while to see someone special. <laughs> Celine is at her art gallery and none other than Hayes Campbell walks in to the art gallery right where they met and they reunite. They get back together basically. Like it's kind of everything. Like, I don't know, like in terms of rom-coms, I really don't like it when rom romantic movies end with them like not together. I think it's like kind of miserable and it kind of makes me hate my life. And it makes me think that like no one understands the point of a romantic movie. And that is to, for two people, two attractive people to kiss and make up at the end of the movie. Honestly, in terms of just the movie by itself, like completely ignoring the controversy surrounding it. I thought it was a fine movie. The idea of you as a slow burn in terms of how much I liked it, really like I think there's no way to set up these plot lines and this type of story without getting me to roll my eyes to the back of my head because how do you set up a 40 year old woman meeting a boy band member and not make me roll my eyes. I'm gonna roll my eyes. And it's a slow burn in how much I liked it. I think you can tell by the, when I'm talking about it that at the beginning I was very much a hater. And then by the end of the movie, I was like, actually, it's kind of like a mediocre slay. Like it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not the best thing in the world. I think that there's a lot of parts of this that I liked that I kind of just accepted it for what it was. Like a 40 year old woman that's serving and living her best life, amazing. Like hot people kissing, amazing. Like I think Anne and Nicholas have very good chemistry together. I think they were a really good casting choice. I think they worked really well together and their like sexual tension was really good. Their emotional scenes together were really good. I think that like they just had a really good back and forth throughout the movie and I liked it. At the end of the day, it was fine. I would like it if the future stopped writing books and writing movies about real life celebrities, especially Harry Styles. If you are going to write something based off of his likeness, 
cut that man a fucking check. At the end of the day, regardless of my thoughts on this movie, regardless of my thoughts on after, these authors are weird. Period. Like, that's it. They're weird. And they need to be stopped. Stop. Use one creative bone of your body and, and write a male lead character that is not based off of Harry Styles. Challenge.